Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the voice of reason. Today, we are continuing our ongoing coverage of the war between the Russian Federation and Ukraine. And uh, today, uh, coming out of the Slovak Republic, uh, Slovakia, Slovakia's new Prime Minister, Robert Fico, has announced on October 26 that his government will end military aid for Ukraine. From now on, the Slovak Republic will only deliver humanitarian support to the besieged nation, he said. I will support zero military aid to Ukraine. An immediate halt to military operations is the best solution we have for Ukraine. The EU should change from a arms supplier to a peacemaker, FICO stated. The European Union should change its role from a supplier of weapons, which it is now, into a peacemaker. A close ally of Ukraine under the previous government, the country's shift in stance is the fulfillment of of an election campaign promise FICO made. Going a step further, he has also shown an increasing skepticism towards sanctions against Russia. I will not vote for any sanctions against Russia unless we see analysis of their impact on Slovakia. If there are to be such sanctions that will harm us, like most sanctions have, I can see no reason to support them. Makes completely perfect common sense, one would think. And obviously, uh, Slovakia had an election, and uh, elections have consequences. And the majority of those in Slovakia did not like its country's current stance in terms of supplying the Ukrainian military, the Ukrainian state. And again, there are a number of reasons uh, behind the why. And if you want to look into this further, if you are a diehard supporter of the Ukrainian state, then by all means, I would suggest that you look at this further and not go along with the mainstream narrative of what's happening in this conflict. Now, with that being said, uh, we continue to see very heavy fighting uh, taking place uh, in the direction of Avdivka. Uh, We are now receiving reports uh, inside of Ukraine, inside the Ukraine, that certain elements uh, within the government, certain elements outside of the government that used to be in the government, now believe that Avdivka is, in fact, going to fall. Now, a interesting tidbit of information is that the narrative coming out of Kiev is the same narrative before we observed the fall of Bakhmut. The Ukrainian military, the Ukrainian political apparatus declared that Russian forces were suffering horrendous casualties. It was going to be a a, a Pyrrhic victory. And at the end of the day, the cost in material and manpower uh, would cost the, the Russians so much that, in fact, even though they took Bakhmut, uh, it would not be a victory in the traditional sense. Now, the question is, is, are the Russians sustaining those types of casualties? It's difficult to say. The numbers that are coming out of the Ukrainian media that are being reported by the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense are incredibly high numbers that one has to take a second look at. The numbers of reported Russian deaths, the amounts of equipment that the Ukrainians alleged to have destroyed, uh, are, are quite high. Very, very, very high. 
and one has to look at numbers that are being reported by other nation states, other media outlets in the West, and those numbers don't jive. They don't, uh, they, they don't make sense in terms of what the Ukrainians are saying and what other outlets are in fact saying. Are the Russians taking casualties in Avdivka? Absolutely. We have seen video evidence that that has occurred. But are we seeing the kinds of numbers that the Ukrainian military alleges? And that is, that, the answer to that is absolutely not. So again, the Russian offensive continues. We know now that the Ukrainian military has been moving uh, assets that, wa that was involved in the Orakiv offensive, the Zaporizhia offensive. Uh, those units have been moved from the Zaporizhia area back towards or up towards the uh, northeastern sector near Avdivka. And that's happening as we speak. And it appears that the, uh, the, uh, the Kiev leadership is uh, going to do everything it can to try and hold on to Avdivka no matter the cost, much like we saw in Bakhmut. Uh, did the Russians take large casualties in Bakhmut? Yes, they did, but the Ukrainians took high numbers of casualties as well. And we know with absolute certainty the Ukrainians are taking appalling casualties in Adivka as well. And that fighting continues. Uh, again, we are going to back up the map where you can kind of see the day-to-day -day tempo of operations in terms of the changing of territories. We'll go back essentially about half a month and then we'll go forward. And you can see, look in this area to the north, this area to the south, uh, it's due west uh, of Abdivka, and you can see this encirclement operation by the Russians that is taking place. Specifically, look here, major battle that occurred in this area just to the uh, north-northeast of the uh, Coke factory. And there you have it. That is a, the up-to-date map, and obviously the fighting uh, continues. So uh, that covers it for today. Again, there appears to be a fracture in the EU. Uh, that fracture is going to continue to widen, and eventually we may see other European nation-states uh, refuse to supply weapons and armaments uh, to uh, Ukraine. Uh, so there we set. Uh, thanks for joining us. As always, have a good day.